we're here now in the Chaos TV studio and we're joined by the lovely social prescriber Julie Pollard. Julie's going to be talking us through the latest in the world of social prescribing. So what have you been up to Julie? Hi. How are you doing? Thanks very much for calling me in for a chat. <laughs> You're so welcome. yeah, it's um business as usual really. We've yeah. been um working with many, many clients as per usual. Um, there's not been much let up since I last came and spoke to you. Wow. Um, and the good news is that the um, social prescribing movement continues um, developing globally as well as um, locally as well and nationally. And um, the number of social prescribers now is up to about 65 just for Cornwall. Wow, okay. So there's plenty of help there in Cornwall for um, people to have that support and to to look at that um the most important thing you know what matters to you really and be yeah. listened listened to and have some time so we've talked obviously a lot about with you and other people about social prescribing mm. Uh, mm. and it's fantastic the, the work we're seeing the the help it's that we're seeing um going to people the people coming through things well because of it mm. but for those who maybe have tuned in for the first time now um during us talking about social prescribing could you give a brief insight into what social prescribing actually is mm, sure yeah okay so there's there's still some um i wouldn't say confusion but people are still asking what do those words mean mm. social prescribing and basically it's linking individuals to things in their community. So to things that are social, to help that is social, and they're prescribed an activity or prescribed some help or support. So that's where the two words social and prescription come together. Um, and it's moving away, so it's an alternative really to pills and potions. So it's anything non-clinical. Right, okay. And I can imagine that's a big uh, help, um, sort of at the ease pressure where, where possible on the NHS as well. It has sort of a, mm. a, a double-sided attack to help people and the NHS. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, there's quite a lot of evidence base out there and social prescribing has been around for many, many years, probably called other things, if, if I'm honest, because, you know, linking people with things in their community is is what it's about um but yeah there's there's this the the idea that um we go from 15 or 10 minute appointments with our gps to look at our clinical needs there's no um time and it's it's not the right place either to then necessarily talk about the social things so the social prescribers one of their um, benefits, one of the, lots of them, but one of the main benefits is that they have more time. Mm. So the first appointment can be between 45 minutes and an hour, oh, which okay. is a huge luxury of time given to a patient to be listened to about all those other things that we've, we've mentioned. And then there's follow-up appointments as well. So they're usually about 20 minutes to half an hour. Obviously, during COVID, everything was on the telephone or online. So, um, yeah, people can still have that sort of support. You, you, they are starting to see people in the surgeries more in many places across the county again. But you can still have the um, video appointment or phone appointment if you prefer. So it's Brilliant. down to personal choice. So, you know, there's lots of flexibility there. And, and it is about, as I say, being given some time, really. Fantastic. Now you said there was what sixty five in Cornwall now. Yeah, approximately. It, it does it does change with you know people um, moving around and um, changing jobs and so on. But but um, yeah, there's a there's approximately that so sixty five across Cornwall at the moment. Um, well over, uh, well over a thousand in England, social wow. prescribing link workers. I was going to ask about that because you talked about the global movement now. How well is it being sort of yeah. adopted and accepted here in wider UK and even in other countries? How mm. is it sort of being accepted in? Yeah, well, again, huge because um, only last week, so social prescribing week last week and the 10th of March being social prescribing day as well. Um, and then on the Thursday and Friday, there was an online international conference, which wow. I was um, really um, um, delighted to, to be able to go to. And looking at the um, different parts of the world who presented on what's happening. So there was Australia, Japan, Singapore, Canada, 
um, Portugal, just trying to think of all the countries that, that were represented, and they were looking at the different models that they actually run and offer to, to people. U United States was also um, uh, quite big on social prescribing. Wow. Um, and for example, I think it was in Singapore, they've got um, social prescribers in community hospitals. Amazing. So, um, and they'd learnt a lot from um, linking up with um, senior people in the UK. So, um, huge um, global movement. It's, it's recognised that it really supports health and well-being. It does reduce some appointments to GPs. And it's, it's looking more at you know, self-management of your own conditions when you're working with someone, linking in with your community and doing things that make you feel better or being involved in that may, you know, quite often means that you, you don't need to see your GP, you don't need some of those other services in within the NHS quite as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you need those clinical medical interventions that are appropriate, but this is the, the social social side of it. So, so yeah, there is a global alliance now and um, there is a website, which um, I think you're okay. going to put up um, for us later on. Awesome. Um, and that is for people who, you know, are interested to see what's going on and globally to be part of that Alliance for Social Prescribing. So it is www.gspalliance.com oblique global hyphen network. Okay. All right. It's lovely to hear that all these groups are from the start really talking to each other and learning from each other mm. um, rather than trying to all go at, at their own ways. But it's not limiting them from trying new things. But yeah. everyone's immediately learning from each other. That's what we need, yeah. isn't it? That's that's right. But the results across different countries in the world are the same. They're seeing the improvements in people saying, this has helped my health and well-being. And the key messages are working together and partnership, collaboration and communicating. Perfect. And if you have that out in the communities between all your professionals and then the the patients or the public that you're serving, then that's that's how it's working. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, could we talk about uh, Volunteer Corbel uh, and talk about, uh, get a little update on that one? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, again, business as usual for Volunteer Cornwall with all the different contracts that we're working on. Um, <laughs> you know been been massive during the last couple of, of years with obviously the covid support for mm. um shopping and, and and medicine um deliveries um and different types of volunteers that we've got as well not not just some of those things but um uh, lifeline volunteers um, reablement volunteers telephone befrienders all those sorts of things are still going on um at the moment um, there will be some changes um, to parts of the system from the beginning of April because we're technically at coming out of COVID recovery and everything yeah. then. Um, but yes, um, with social prescribing, um, back, back to that for Volunteer Cornwall and the partnership that we have with our um, charitable partners, because um, we've been running social prescribing, we're into our fourth year. So our original project comes to an end at the end of March, um, but we have a new contract for a year, um, again through public health. Yeah, fantastic news. Really and um, it's a, should I say, it's like, like a bit of a hybrid, a new role. So we're, we're trialing this in the, in the community more because of what um, social prescribers and people have said that right. is needed. So it's going to be social prescriber and community development worker Okay. based out in the community. So they'll work closely with the social prescribers in the surgeries and there might be um, a gap in the provision in, I'll just, just take a village like, we'll say Mullion, for example. Okay. And then they'll work together with the social prescribers and the new um, social prescriber community development worker and say, you know, we need a certain type of group in that area. Um, can you, you help us with that? We've got several patients that might benefit from something. And then the new role is going to help settle that up. Okay. Um, they'll take the time to um, meet and greet people at a new venue. 
at a new session. So they'll sort of handhold and make people that might still be a bit anxious about getting out, make them feel reassured, take them along. And then they might be running the group or they will get others, sometimes volunteers. Again, we're, we're encouraging volunteers to help support us in the community all the time so um, they can you know come along and work with a worker and start to running groups you know it might just be a, a um, cup of tea and a chat afternoon um, <laughs> so that you know that can be run by you know someone who who feels they, they want to do that but we can start it all off so um, so that's real real um, uh, good news that we've got that it's that year's progress. contrast good yeah. progress so there's going to be six full-time workers across Cornwall fantastic and starting in April I can imagine these uh, these workers out in the community as well is going to help to break some barriers down where people would have a that typical stigma isn't it especially when it comes to mental health where mm. you don't really want to take that first step get on the phone to talk to someone or go to a, a doctor surgery to talk yeah. to someone if there's somebody in your community you may feel less of that pressure that's less right. that barrier I think that's a brilliant idea yeah. Yeah, and I mean it happens already. You know, some some of this this happens already. This is um, just trying to focus and bring some more things together and support some of the people out in the community doing some of that already. Mm. And it might mean that, like you say, there's someone new comes in who hasn't yet contacted their GP surgery, or it may come the other way that this is suggested to them and they want to try it and then they'll report back to their GP how, how it's gone. So it's going to be exciting. Um, there's also the new integrated care system okay. coming online um, from the 1st of April, and that's going to help us develop um, well, lo lots of things for health and wellbeing for the whole county over, the, over, the, over time. Um, so that's sort of um, working together with voluntary sector and all the... Um, NHS, etc., primary care networks and and primary and secondary care. Um, so, but but also part of that um, vol volunteer Cornwall and um, colleagues and partners have been asked to develop community wellbeing hubs. Okay. Okay. Across the county, so some places already exist. So if we take somewhere like, um, say, the Betjeman Centre at okay. Weybridge, yep. so some of the professionals, the key professionals, have been working <coughs> together very closely for some time and offering and setting up some of these things um, already. But it's bringing sort of more services available there for people to access, and different parts of Cornwall will have more than one community wellbeing hub so okay. so it's not just that Weybridge Betjeman Centre is the only one for North Cornwall there will be right. others and there, there possibly are some others I think there's about 23 at the moment wow, okay. across the, the county um, but the whole plan is to um, develop more of those so um, so that's exciting as well Very exciting. with more professionals working together helping to bring the community in um, to those places but and, and setting up things but also bringing other specialist services as appropriate to to those areas it could be a village hall it could be um, a, a day type center it, you know it can be all sorts of venues so could we talk I love the fact that there's obviously more awareness out there more people taking positive steps to to work with social prescribers more people with with training more people who just genuinely want to help and a lot more people now being aware that these mm. options are there and people mm. to go and see and uh, um, there's help available what kind of services um are there at the moment we've talked a lot about different services that such as social prescribers will point people towards have you had anything different and new come in recently um just trying to think i mean there's there's the good news is that more services are coming back That's brilliant. and um, developing. So, you know, things that might have just gone online are now coming back to offer both online and face to face. Um, and if we take um, the children and young people's aspect of social prescribing, and we have a few of them in the county now and that work developing, um, then um, Sonia, who's been with us before on the sofa, who obviously mm. works for um chaos and part of our our current program of social prescribing she's been developing that in the schools in secondary schools in truro 
Brilliant. And that's had, you know, really, really positive feedback, excellent work going on there. And she's been developing those relationships with providers such as um, Granite Planet for climbing and um, Niki Boxing and um, recently one of the stables, I think it's Goon Bell Stables. So trying to offer provision to those young people that's going to help them to do something um, that supports their health and well-being. It's funny you mention those two actually because uh, coming up actually next in, in our next hour we have got uh, a little uh, piece that we did a little while ago called The Chalk Effect um, oh, with yeah. uh, Jordan Remington. Yes. And that's what we've got coming up. Um, and yeah. you mentioned obviously Nuki Boxing. Uh, I've got yeah. the name Richard Powers here. Richard, yeah, that's right. So they've been really supportive. So when Sonia, as the link worker, has approached them and, and others to say, look, We've got some young people that, as part of their social prescribing um, prescription, would like to do some sessions with you. Um, can we work, work on this? And, uh, you know, um, is that something you could support them with? Because all of this is about, like I say, being sort of very person centred, mm. saying what matters to you. So then looking at those priorities, looking at your interests and then trying to find something that's really going to um, key in, work, you know, tie in to that person and really make them start to feel better because they're doing something that they can focus on. Yeah. Um, and that's sometimes then we'll take them away from some of the complexities and help them to sort of reflect and, and develop their own um, mental health and well-being. Well, everyone's individual, aren't they? And yeah. there's no right thing that will work for lots of people perfectly. If you want to do some, work something out perfectly, you need to do it individually, don't you? Of course. Um, it's actually, I'm having a little sneak peek now as we're chatting actually at mm. our next section, obviously, because <laughs> it's very, very linked. Um, if, it looks like uh, we're thrilled to hear, obviously, that um, they've received new funding to provide one-to-one -one support and group climbing therapy, oh, which great. is fantastic fantastic to hear uh, and again it goes down to that one-to-one -one sort of support again doesn't it it does yeah and you know with with uh, at the last count uh, over three and a half thousand charitable organizations just in Cornwall you're saying about you know what sort of provision is there there's there's so many things I mean yourselves at chaos you do yeah. the equine therapy at the farm and and other places in in Cornwall that offer that and we've used that for some clients as well you know there's there's just a whole plethora of things that are available um and that that is growing um which is is good news um we just need to try and and this is a question and a debate that we get all the time we need that sustainability yeah. in that provision and like you're saying they've just been awarded funding and you know a lot of charities have to um, bid for funding and try and get new contracts to make sure that their provision is sustainable. Um, and in social prescribing there are things that are free that we can all access in the community, we know that. And some things that are on um, reduced rates at some po sometimes for people on very low incomes or no income. But of course, you know, things have still got to run. You've, you've still got to. Yeah. So, so you know, it comes up a lot about the sustainability of provision um, and, you know, senior um, representatives do escalate that and do shout about it in, um, you know, powers out, out of Cornwall to say, you know, we do need to, um, to sustain that. And having longer term funding as well, rather than just perhaps one year funding yeah. or a little bit trying to make it long longer term for people um, of course. so that more and more people benefit really well i know that obviously you're a busy bee as well trying to get on with everything linked to this i know <laughs> that you're or you're already in two minds about uh, what you've got coming up next what you got to go um tell me a little bit about um what's been going on with you specifically how is your role what have you been doing in your role lately so my role is as the uh, Cornwall Social Prescribing Coordinator. Right. So um, so I don't actually work one to one with patients. I, I have done in in various roles over over the years. Um, so my role really was was developing and monitoring um, the original project from September two thousand and eighteen, and trying to. And make that as successful and well evaluated as possible and 
developing the partnership of all our charitable, par charitable partners who, as you know, are Age UK, Active Plus, Chaos Yourselves, <laughs> uh, Cornwall Neighbourhoods for Change, The Eden Project and Pen Trees. And that partnership has been so successful and um, the, the workers are employed by all of um, those partners and then I'm employed by Volunteer Cornwall, so we've managed the contract, um, but you know, with great collaboration and working together. And that's enabled us now to get this new contract for those new six workers for the next year Brilliant. with continuing that partnership and, and that collaborative working. So, so my role really has been a lot about developing that. It's been, um, and it continues to be, um, trying to gauge what additional training and development link workers want across the county. So I ask them regularly if they have what they need um, to do their role. And then um, wherever possible, we'll source something and get that put on for them. So um, running the, um, the network for Cornwall and Isles of Scilly social prescribing. So we had a meeting last night, countywide, oh, wow. for anyone who's got an interest in social prescribing. So um, it was online. And I think we had about 70 people signed up for wow. that. So it's anyone who's got an interest in it. It's link workers, it could be managers. Um, it was led by our Director of Public Health, Rachel Wigglesworth, who wow. started off our original contract with us for social prescribing, who's a huge advocate of its benefits to everyone's health. Um, and we have at least two of those network meetings per year. So my role is, you know, really helping to bring all that together. Um, and then, yeah, the same with the wider Cornwall social prescribing team. So, so about every six weeks, I bring all of those guys together if they want to. It's 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 not mandatory, um, but again, we look at um, sharing good practice. So some of the CTEC Plus guys come because there's you know of, obviously other partners um, that, that deliver in Cornwall as well. So anyone that's a social prescriber can join. They share ideas, they share successes, they share challenges and we'll have some input from speakers as well. So um, I think you mentioned the armed services and veterans social prescribers, Yes. Um, one of whom used to be in our original team and we get um, other link workers like themselves to come and update us on how well that's going Fantastic. and how that's being rolled out and the, there's a lot of um, cross referral and working together now because there's that additional service if if you have a patient present to you that has had um, some time in the services even just one day then the the armed services social prescribers have um, referral routes that they can help and support with too so I guess that's that's still I say I guess it is <laughs> going to be my role going going forward is the new contracts plus the social prescribing network, plus the wider Cornwall coordination. And um, yeah, so just a few things. <laughs> just, a, just a few, just, just a bit of a busy bee there. <laughs> it's really good to hear how everything is progressing forward and going so well. I personally love the how on top of you all are of talking from people on site all the way up through management mm. uh, and just making sure that everyone's on the ball with keeping up to date what's working well, what's not. Because if you let that ball go slightly, you won't end up help being help being able to help people in the right way. Mm, mm. Um, but it's been it's Julie. It's been lovely to have you on. Um, could Thank I ask you. you again for that website one last yeah, time, just absolutely. so that anyone out there wondering doesn't miss it? Yeah. So this is um, if you're interested in global social prescribing, really. So it's um, www.gspalliance.com oblique global dash network. Thank you very much. And we will That's put that right. up, obviously, when this uh, comes on to uh, recorded uh, content to, for you guys to watch back later. Sure. Julie, thank you so much for coming in the studio. It's been always, a pleasure as always. Always thank lovely you. to catch up with you. Anytime. Uh, guys, uh, we're going to just give you the contact details now. So if you've missed anything uh, of this interview and you've missed any details and you want to get in contact with us here, please don't hesitate. We can signpost you in the right direction. 01872 228844 is our phone and our WhatsApp number. Please 
is just get the bill payers permission before you do so. You can email us at hello at thisiscaos.co.uk or catch us on social media at chaos tv uk and use the hashtag keep it chaos. Mm -hmm.